I'm Joy Axelson and this lecture we're going to be looking at vertical helps for between for Joel chapter 1 verse 1 through chapter 2 verse 17 and these are the two judgment sections in this book so we have the first cycle in Joel chapter 1 verse 1 through 20 where we have what's possible locust plague and then the first call to repentance and so there's two possibilities you can see this as a locust plague that has just happened and the land and the people are devastated Joel's pointing back to what's happened as proof and the call to the call the people to repent because further judgment is coming what he talks about in chapter 2 or you can interpret it as a locust plague or a real army that's about to happen to them. Because sometimes in other prophet books it talks about things as if they've already happened. It uses the past tense. So that's up to you. I kind of see it as it already a locust plague has already happened. But you need to think about it yourself. But the focus in this first cycle is how whatever's happened or will happen affects all the people the animals the land and it's a picture of the covenant curses no sins are mentioned here again we talked about that but it's just judgment and the results of judgment so he starts off in chapter 1 verse 2 and he says hear this you elders give ear all the inhabitants of the land has such a thing happened in your day or in the days of your father and what he's saying here is what has happened or will happen is so horrible it's never happened before like this before and so in verse 4 I'm not going to read it but it, it talks about the four stages of the development of the locust or it could be just figurative language to talk about how devastating this judgment is and verses 5 through 12 of chapter 1 Joel is calling to attention specific groups of people in verse 5 he talks to the drunkards in verse 9 to the priest and verse 11 he talks to the farmers to show how everyone is affected how everyone um, can see that there's total destruction and they really need to realize how serious it is and how much it's affected all of them directly. In uh, verse 7, it talks about, It has laid waste to my wine and splintered my fig tree. It has stripped off their bark, thrown it down, and their branches are made white. And for Israel, the picture of the fig tree and the vine are a picture of security and prosperity and were important produce because they could be saved and used all year round. And this is a picture of when what locusts actually do is they usually don't prefer the fig tree but they will um, eat it if there's nothing else left. And what they do to the trees is they strip off all the bark so that it's left white as we see in this verse here and usually the trees would die then in verse 10 it the author talks about um, the wine and the grain and the oil and these are the main crops of the Jews and it's just considering and they were considered as God's blessings but we see here that the covenant curses have come and in chapter 1 verse 10 through 12 we see a picture of the total destruction of the food and even at towards the end of the chapter in verses 6 through 18 it talks about how the seeds are destroyed their future crop of how animals both the wild animals and the domestic animals are affecting and how they are also mourning so why does Joel draw this dramatic picture was well, to show that everything the animals the people the land everything has been affected by this horrible event no one's exempt everybody is suffering and Joel wants the people to think about why did this happen and they have to realize that they're responsible it's because of their sins it's the covenant curses have come and we see this in Deuteronomy 28 38 where locusts part of the covenant curse 
chapter Deuteronomy 28:22, drought is, famine is in chapter Leviticus 26 verse 26, the fields are cursed in Deuteronomy 28 verse 16, and the land is devastated. We see that in Leviticus 26 verse 32 through 33. And so in this chapter, Joel always also emphasizes of how the people should respond, that they should wail and lament, that they should be ashamed, that they should put on sackcloth and ashes, that they should call a fast and assembly to cry out to God in chapter 1 verse 14. So why does he do this? What does he want the people to see? He wants them to understand that they are responsible for what has happened to them. That because of their sins, God had to bring the covenant curses. And he shows proof of what has happened. He shows, hey, look, you don't have crops. You don't have the figs and the olives and all your seeds are destroyed. And then in verses 15, he is a woe oracle. And he talks about how the day of the Lord is coming. And so if you think what has just happened is bad, well, something worse is coming. It's like a future invader is coming. And so Joel talks about it more in chapter 2. So he does this to say, hey, you guys need to repent. Because the day of the Lord is coming. And their proper response to... God's judgment is to repent and to see that they have sinned. And, and even in chapter 1, Joel calls attention to the priests to repent because they are also an example for the people to follow. So they need to realize that they are all guilty, that they have all sinned, and that they are affected by their sin and their judgment. And the day of the Lord is coming. Even a greater invader, something greater judgment is coming. So they need to repent and hope of God's mercy that it can be delayed. So Joel ends this cycle in verse 19 and 20 with a prayer. So now let's look at the second cycle in Joel chapter 2 verse 1 through 17 that another army is coming. It could be either real another locust plague or it could be the Assyrians and the Babylonians. The focus here is the terror that is to come and what this army does. He starts off in chapter 2 verse 1, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm for the day of the Lord is coming. And the, the blowing of the horn is like blowing of warning and um, an alarm, an invader is coming. And so we see the description of this invader in chapter 2 verse 2. This invader or great army is like blackness covering the mountains of how it will, they will cover everything. They are so many in number. And in verse 4, they're like horses where they're moving so fast and coming with such great speed. And verse 5 and 6, you have this, the sound of this army coming and the terror that it creates in the people. In verses 7 through 9, it talks about how this army will charge, how it goes over the walls into the houses as a picture of nothing can start this army. And then in verse 11, God says that this is his army because God is using this nation or locust, whatever you think it is, that they are performing God's judgment. So then we come to verse 12 through 17 and we have the second call to repentance so what does he want the people to do well it's in verses 12 through 15 he calls them to return to God with their whole heart to rend their heart that it's not just to be physical outward signs of repentance but they are to have a real heart attitude of repentance and changing that their heart will be broken because of their sin and their disobedience. And he calls in, um, chap in chapter 2 verse 15 a um, fast, a solemn assembly because it's the whole congregation, it's all the people, including the leaders and the priests that are responsible. So they should all repent together. 
and then Joel's reason for this is and we see kind of a play on words in verse 12 where he says yet even now declares the Lord return to me with your whole heart because in verse 13 the end of it, it says return to the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger abounding in steadfast love and he will rent over disaster and so there's the idea here that as they return to God, that God will return to them. That even though judgment is present, it's maybe happened, but there is the promise of the day of the Lord coming future. Judgment is coming. It's not too late. God can prevent this judgment from coming. So repent while there's time. Have hope in God. And what the verse we just read is about God's character and it's taken from Exodus 34 verse 6 through 7 and it's God's heart is to forgive God is willing to change his judgment into blessing if they will just repent and Deuteronomy 30 verses 1 through 6 talks about how if the people will reach out to God after they've experienced the covenant curses and experienced God's judgment if they will go back to God and repent, that God would give them the covenant blessings again. So it's possible for these people to, to prevent this great disaster happening during their time if they only repent and turn back to God. And God can send His covenant blessings, which we see um, through the rest of this book. So this really made me think about that God's heart is really to forgive and he wants to extend grace and there's many times he gives grace even when it's not deserved and so the real true response to God's grace and to his salvation that he gives us is for us to respond into repentance that we be quick to repent and not have hard-hearted but quickly return to God and deal when we do sin Thank you. That's the end of this lecture.